Oh, yuck. No, no. Okay, so uh, th we talked about all this stuff last time, except now we're going to talk about it in a little more detail. Um, syntax, semantics, inference rules. Okay, uh, I showed the slide last time, and I kind of skipped over this line here, and now I'm going to actually say what that line means. Uh, time for a picture. Picture, picture, picture. Um, uh, okay. So, the physical symbol system hypothesis says that, that somewhere out here there's, uh, there's reality. At least that's what they tell me. I don't know, I haven't really been there, but, uh, <laughs> but they tell me that there is some objective reality out there. And so there are truths. Things that there are things that are true, and in our in our logic, um, we're going to have. Uh, let's see. Um, we're going to have a semantics and. Um, there are uh, there are formulas, and they're going to have truth values, and then at the syntactic level, we've got uh, sentences. Now I I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be using the word "woof" for both of these. Maybe I should just say sentences. Got sentences, and. The idea is that the semantics tells us what the sentences mean. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll just cross this out, and I'll say that semantics is the arrow that connects sentences with truths about reality. And Except that's not quite true. That's not quite true. I'm going to... I mean, that is true, but we go through something called models. I'm gonna, I'll just write models here. That's what I'll do. Woofs and sentences, I'll, let's, let's claim those are equivalent. Um, now, in reality, the fact that some things are true is going to imply that certain other things are true. Um, and... We have sort of an intuitive notion of that, and that we can test by doing experiments in reality. There's some, there's some follows from relation in the, in the natural world that we might try to model in our logic. And in, down at the syntactic level, we've got sentences, and what we're going to have is inference rules. And inference rules take some sentences in our logic and let us derive new sentences. But in between, in between the inference rules that, that are at the, semant the syntactic level and the intuitive follows from that operates at the level of reality, there's a that we have semantics. Um, and and uh, that's kind of like a, a specification of how the logic is supposed to work. And that's called entailment. Something is entailed um, if uh, it's necessarily true. Now, ideally, your inference rules capture entailment. That's kind of the analog of your program fulfilling its spec. Like the semantics tells you what is true, it tells you what the meaning of the sentences are, how it lines up with reality. You design the logic so that the semantics mirrors whatever aspect of reality you're trying to model. And then you try and build inference rules that obey whatever entailment relations you've set up. You can have inference rules that are unsound, 
which means they're, they're, they don't correctly imp compute entailment, why on earth would you ever implement an unsound inference rule? Something that's like wrong. Dan? Do you have incomplete data? Mm, no, if you have incomplete data, then there are fewer things that are entailed by it. So I might choose to implement an unsound inference rule if, for example, it's really fast and rarely makes mistakes in the kinds of domains that I'm interested in. You know, like, like ready, fire, aim? You know, that's kind of unsound. But some people operate that way just because in whatever job they do, like the cost of mistakes might be really low. You can always patch it up later. <laughs> um, so... So that sound, soundness has to do with whether your inference rules capture entailment. So this is the soundness relationship. Is that like admissibility? I'm sorry? Is that similar to admissibility? Uh, yeah, it is similar. And the next word I was about to use is also exactly is, is completeness. When we talked about search algorithms, we talked about admissibility and completeness. So admissibility being, uh, do you get the, are you guaranteed the optimal answer, the optimal solution? Soundness is, are you guaranteed that your inferences are deriving correct stuff? Um, then completeness. So uh, can you derive everything that is in fact entailed? How many inference rules do we have to have in order to have completeness in our logic? That's a question you can ask. If someone is trying to come sell you a new logic, you can say, well, I don't want to buy your logic. Do you have a set of sound and complete inference rules that runs in linear time? <laughs> and I'll say, no way can it run in linear time. But if you give me exponential time, yeah, it's sound incomplete. And then you're like, oh, OK, that's, that's OK. I can deal with that. And then you implement it, and then your boss yells at you because it's too slow. And then you implement some unsound inference rules, and then it runs really fast and sometimes makes mistakes. OK, so everyone capture the uh, terminology there? Uh, I'm not really sure Nathan. Entailment. Okay, yeah, it'll become clearer the more we do it. Uh, so I'm going to show you some inference rules. So for example, I think we talked about modus ponens last time. The number one inference rule of all time. The greatest hit of, of, of logic, modus ponens. Anyone remember what it is? Yeah, I like to say A, A implies B, B, but you know, that's fine. Uh, so that's modus ponens. Uh, sound. For propositional logic, that's totally sound. Um, is it complete for, first, for, for propositional logic? Can you derive everything that is true by applying this inference rule? No, you cannot. It's not complete. Nathan. Yeah, we haven't talked about that at all. Okay. You have every right to be curious. <sighs> um, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. The semantics of, research, of, of, of uh, propositional logic. So I'm just trying to think if I have a, a new uh, a slide about that, and I think I do. Oh, yeah, it's even called semantics. Look at that. Uh, all right, so does this, does this slide match with what I just claimed? Syntax, defined sentences, semantics, the relation to the world, inference rules, reaching new conclusions, yes. Soundness, completeness, and oh my god, it'd be great if we could build the advice taker. Uh, we already talked about the physical symbol system hypothesis. All right, so semantics. Somebody asked about semantics of propositional logic. So here we go. So yet more terminology. I apologize, but I didn't invent logic, so don't blame me. Uh, I've used the phrase like possible world a bunch of times already when we've been talking about knowledge representation. I mean, when you have a bunch of knowledge in your head, if that knowledge is useful, it is somehow telling you about the affairs in the world. Um, particularly, one way of thinking about knowledge is that it, it tells you what could be true. So it's a compact way of writing down the possible worlds you could be in. I really don't know which world I'm in right now. Like, is there, are there five people outside or four? I really don't know. I have an incomplete understanding of the state of the world. 
which is fine with me. There are a lot of things I'm just glad I don't know. Um, so, um, so people often talk about these possible worlds. And in, in propositional logic, a, proposition, a, a possible world has a very particular meaning. And it's a particular assignment of truth values to all the propositions. Remember that the propositions, even though I write down just very simple little letters so things will fit on the slide, they correspond to things I'm interested in knowing about, like, is it raining outside? Or rather, it is raining outside. That can be true or false. Um, the bomb is about to explode in five seconds. That could be true or false. Uh, you know, I am soaking wet. Could be true or false. These are pro 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 propositions. And if we take all the propositions in our in our logic or, the, or in our domain, usually when you write down a bunch of propositions, now you've sort of defined the domain you're talking about. And, and each of those propositions could be true or false. That describes all the possible worlds. And then when you write something down, you're asserting its truth and thereby limiting the number of possible worlds. So if I say, it is raining out, is true, now the world, all those worlds in which, who cares about how the other variables were configured, but it is raining out was false, all those worlds are now not possible. They're no longer possible worlds. I've just eliminated half of the possible worlds by setting one variable's value. Everybody following along? Making some amount of sense? Um, so this, these worlds in which the sentences in our knowledge base are true are called models. Um, so an interpretation is a possible world of uh, signs of truth value to each proposition. It's an interpretation of the propositions, you could say. A model is, is an interpretation in which the sentences are true. So you can talk about, the, so the possible states of the world are the ones that are models for the sentences in my knowledge base. Like it's not possible that there's a giant dragon upstairs in my office. Like that's just not a possible world for me. It's not a model of the world. It doesn't correspond, it's not, it's not one of, the, the, one, of the, one of the models for my knowledge base. Um, so for propositional logic, to talk about the semantics of it is to talk about the models. Um, what's true about the, about the models that, of our knowledge base. And entailment, this is the crux of semantics, the really interesting part. What's the entailment relation? Because um, that's what, what uh, this is the formal spec for the inference routines that we're going to write. If we're going to write correct, sound inference rules that, that are um, mimicking the entailment relation, then the entailment relation is really the crucial part of the logic, crucial part of the semantics. It's written like this. Um, so you could have, um, you'd have, it's called double turnstile. Uh, you could have a, a double turnstile B means A entails B. Um, oftentimes you see KB double turnstile alpha, which means that alpha is entailed by the, the knowledge base. Um, and that means that alpha is true in all the models of the knowledge base. So if in every model that's consistent with my knowledge base, Dan is in a, sitting in a chair, then Dan is sitting in a chair is entailed by my knowledge base. There's no world consistent with what I know in which he is not sitting in a chair. I know that he's sitting in a chair. No matter all those propositions that I don't know the value of that are not nailed down by the things that I know, they don't, whatever, however they come out, he is sitting in a chair. So I know that is true. Kind of straightforward. That's entailment. It's entailed by what you know. Like, is there a peanut butter sandwich in the fridge upstairs? I don't know. That's not, I don't, that's not entailed by what I know. There are worlds consistent with what I know in which there is a peanut butter up sandwich upstairs in the fridge, and there is a world in which there is not a peanut butter sandwich upstairs in the fridge, and, and both of those worlds are compatible with everything I know. So, they're not in, so there is a peanut butter sandwich upstairs in the fridge is not entailed by my KB. Um, What can we say that's entailed by this? If we know x and y, and we know this, and we know x and not y, and we know z, if we know 
all of these things Well, let's see. No, wait, wait. If we know, if we know this and this, if we know x and not y, and we know x and not y implies z, then is z entailed? It ought to be, right? If we know this and we know this, then do we know this? So we look at all the worlds. I've written them all the world, possible worlds down for you. We look at all the worlds in which these are both true. And we check whether z is true there. Uh, that is the only one in which these are both true. And z is indeed true there. So z is entailed. This is just modus ponens, right? Modus, it, that inference rule is a correct implementation of entailment. It's sound. Because in fact, when we know this, and we know this implies z, then when we know both of these things, z is in fact true. Pretty handy. No. Uh, x and not y does not entail z. Here is a place where x and not y is true and z is false. But if we know x and not y, and we also know that x and not y implies z, then we know that z holds. Does everyone understand? You guys have done truth tables before, right? So you understand how these things are written down. Joe, is this making sense? OK, good. Uh, all right, so that's entailment. Something is entailed if it's true in all models. So you have blah entails blah, or foo, foo entails bar if bar is true in every model of foo. OK, so now you know how to test whether an inference rule is sound or not, in propositional logic at least. You could just write all this down and see if it comes out correctly. Um, Proposition logic is a nice, simple logic. Very straightforward to write down all the models, all the possible worlds. Um, well, uh, it's not as bad as it's going to get. Let's just say that. 